I can show you how to slice and 3D print non-planar layers just like this. So as you can see, first off, I don't have a lot of clearance under here and this fan shroud gets very close to the top of the part, so I had to model a piece that was very shallow. I did take this uh, small fan duct off. This is a stock tornado fan duct. That gave me a little bit of clearance, enough at least to make this part, but the part cooling is not great. So let's get into it. It's not simple. There's a few steps you have to take. Uh, first of all, the only software that's available is Linux based and it's a slick 3R or slicer depending on how you want to call it. So I'll take you through uh, setting up Linux, installing the slick 3R and uh, getting your settings at least initially set so you can get started. Alright let's get started. Uh, sorry for the cheesy recording on my screen but I'm going to be flipping back and forth between Windows and Linux here so I didn't know how to do a screen capture across those platforms and I need to issue a warning because the first time I did this uh, I, what we're gonna do here is make a dual boot system for your computer so you'll have the choice to boot to Ubuntu Linux or Windows and the first time I did it it didn't work Ubuntu booted fine but I couldn't get back into Windows 10 I, it took me several tries doing uh, Windows repair and if you're not comfortable with that idea you should probably stop now Part of my problem the first time I did this was that I was allowing the Ubuntu loader to boot and I was trying to choose windows from that. Uh, and that's this window here. So what I would do is go down to Boot Manager and it wouldn't work. Windows wouldn't boot, it gave me some errors and it went right into a troubleshooting and diagnostics type thing. So what you do need to do when you restart your computer is hit this you need to get into the computer's boot menu. Um, and for me to do that, I gotta restart, and then it gives me the option to hit F12, and it gets me into the boot menu. This is the boot menu for mine. This is the actual um, boot menu for the computer itself. So here's where Ubuntu is on the top, so that's gonna be your default. You, you need to choose Windows Boot Manager if you wanna go back into Windows. You can go into BIOS and flip these around so Windows is the default, which I'll go ahead and do later, but that's not the point of this video. So, all of these instructions are in a link. Um, I'm actually working off that script and I'm tweaking it as I go so it'll look exactly the way it needs to for you. So first thing we're going to do is go to Ubuntu.com and then we'll go to the download, pull down, and select Ubuntu Desktop. And... It says thanks for downloading and if you'll see down here it's uh, in the lower left corner if you're using Chrome it's it's downloading so once that's done we'll come back next thing we need to do is go download Rufus this will allow you to make a bootable thumb drive so you can install Ubuntu uh, the link is in the description but it's uh, rufus.ie forward slash en and be careful because up in the top here there will be links that look like the download but they're ads don't click on those you got to scroll down and click on this download rufus 3.17 as of today um, so you'll download that i don't want the ad close that so rufus is downloading in my lower left i see that as well so now that my download is done, I'm going to run this Rufus download that I download. I can just click on it in Chrome, and that brings up uh, the application. And yes, I want to run it. So first thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to put a thumb drive in, and I'm just taking a regular old 16 gig thumb drive and plugging it into the front of my computer here. And this is the one, so make sure you got the right device. Um, under boot selection, leave this as disk ISO, and then select here, and you're gonna go to your downloads and grab this Ubuntu ISO that you just downloaded. And click open. 
down here it should say ready and then go ahead and click start and this will make your boot drive we want to go ahead and use iso mode and click ok of course it warns you it's going to erase everything on the drive on your thumb drive that's expected go ahead and you can see the status bar working in the bottom here all right, so it finished up and I pulled the thumb drive, or I left the thumb drive in there and I'm restarting my computer. So now when my, my computer comes up, if I hit F12 at startup, um, it will bring up a boot menu. And I'll have the choice to boot from this uh, SanDisk, which is my uh, thumb drive. That's what I wanna choose. And it will boot up from that and you want to choose the default the star Ubuntu and it will boot f your computer from the thumb drive at this point it's gonna run a check disk I'm gonna let this happen because uh, there may be some issues with your thumb drive or your computer. I'm just gonna go ahead and let it do that. You can press Control C to cancel. Almost complete here. No errors found. So at this point we're running from the thumb drive. And you can choose this left option to try Ubuntu and it will let you do everything we're talking about here today, but none of it will save. So next time you boot, you're gonna have to go through the entire process again. And ask me how I know. So what I did and what you're gonna do if you choose to, this is your last warning, you just no turning back after this. You're gonna do install Ubuntu. I'm not gonna do it here with you just now so what you're going to do the next steps will be uh, select install ubuntu and let it do the file check and then do a normal installation and install ubuntu alongside windows boot manager so this is all uh, in my notes for the video too it might be a good idea to print those so let me uh, fast forward to the next step after you've got ubuntu loaded so now after you've got Ubuntu installed, you have two choices after you get into your boot manager. Uh, again, to get to your boot manager, you restart your computer. In my case, while it's booting, I have the option to press F12. That brings me to this screen. Now, you can choose Windows at this point or Ubuntu. Um, so I'm going to choose Ubuntu because we're going to continue on, and I'll just hit Enter because that's already selected. And then the star Ubuntu at the top here, well, that's the default. And this will boot off of the hard drive into Ubuntu. And uh, my username, I click on it, and my password. These are all things you would have set up in your installation. So now at this point, this already has, uh, this is already set up for the following steps. So I'm going to get you started on each step, but I won't follow through with them. So we're going to go to Firefox, top left corner here, and we're going to go to 3D Print Guides. The link is in the description for the exact download, but here it is here. And you'll scroll down to the very bottom. And that's where you'll find in his string down here, it gives you the exact address to go find. And here they are. So it's uh, 3D print guide, settings, download, slick 3R, blah, 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 script. So we're going to start a new window and we're going to go there. And we're going to hit this download button. And it's gonna, you're going to want to save the file. And then go ahead, OK up here we can check on it it looks like it's ready so we will open it and we are going to ex we're going to um, extract this and we are going to put it onto our desktop so i've already done that so i'm not going to do this step but you can see how to follow through so at that point 
we will get to our desktop and here is the file that we that we downloaded so we're going to right click on the desktop and say open in terminal that'll get us to our text terminal we got a few things we got to type in here we're going to type in sudo su which elevates our law our user here temporarily and I need my password again so then just follow my script the one you're gonna get in the description um, we're gonna type actually I'm gonna get this from the video description and copy and paste so I've gone to the video description and, and I have copied the next command sudo cmod a plus rwx you'll see it in the description and then you just right click here and you can paste it and this gives us permission to run our next command which we are also going to go to the video description and copy because it's too long to type in we're going to right click and paste and i got an extra quote so i'll delete that we're going to hit enter and at this point this is going to take a long time there's going to be a lot of compilation going on and the screen's going to be scrolling and some things going by some red letters will go by don't worry about those um, if you expand your window down here you'll get a longer chance to see what they're saying again i'm not going to do this because it's already set up on mine when you get to the end it's going to ask you a question about a folder so at the end when it asks you about the folder uh, i typed in forward slash home forward slash k-i-s-i-g which is my username forward slash capital s l-i-c-3 small r forward slash that's in the link of the description just copy and paste it and enter and then the install will finish so at that point you will have slick 3r installed so going to the next step how do you run it so i have this folder here on the desktop um, which I am going to open and it, this is the file here we want to run the slick3r-pl so I know there's a way to make a shortcut on the desktop to run this but that's not why we're here today so I'm just going to do it the hard way you right click in the white space open in terminal and all we're going to do is type in Perl and then the name of that file, slick3r.pl. Make sure that anything that's supposed to be capitalized is. It's, cap, it's case sensitive. In this case, we don't have to worry about it. And hit enter, and it starts up slick3r. So at this point, if you're used to slick3r, you're good to go. You can pretty much use it the way it is, but I'll go through a little bit, a couple more settings that help me out. Whoops, so the, what you're really gonna be looking for, I already have some presets set in here for my Tebow Tornado. So the print settings is gonna be, this box here is what we went through all of this pain for. So in this area here, we choose to use non-planar layers. Um, there are uh, several things out on the web that have you measure your hot end and how much clearance you have and the angles and things. I could not get this to work until I typed in 50 degrees uh, for clearance in both of these spots. Now this spot here, the maximum non-planar collision height, that I did measure and that's from the tip of the printing head or the nozzle to where it screws into the heater block. And that was 6.5 millimeters on my particular machine. So with these settings, I was able to successfully print non-planar. So you're going to have to go through all of these settings and your infill. You pick what you want for infill and all, just like normal slicers. And when you're done, you can save it or just get out. So we'll go back to the platter. And uh, there's also a filament settings you need to check. Make sure your filament diameter is correct, your temp is correct, um, and your bed temp. Go back to the platter, select printer settings, and you're going to set your bed 
which they probably asked you to do in the setup at the beginning. Uh, mine is 306 millimeter by 304 millimeter uh, because I have some mods. Hit OK. Uh, one extruder, none of these things need to really be set. At this point, you're pretty much ready to slice. One thing I do need to mention you're going to need to do before you can run this, if you're not familiar with Slick 3R, is go to the filament settings tab then go to custom g-code and you, you need to add in your start and end code for your printer if you don't already have that there is some in my description down there but it's for my computer it'd be best if you had it for yours so if you don't have these tabs up at the top click on platter go over to the right and then click the little gear next to filament you can see it over here <clears throat> click that and it will bring you to that same window and also this tab will stay up there at that time so if we go to the platter and uh, we're going to add a part now i already have gone to on shape and i created this uh, small disc shaped piece that we see here and this is the non-planar version of it i have a planar version printing right now that i'll show you the comparison in the middle in a minute so this simple piece I have created and I'm gonna select that and open. Brings us into the window. So I have all my settings already preset so all I need to do to slice it is click the preview tab. And it's already got it sliced and on the top layer. So you can see that the top layers are in fact non-planar and then I selected four top layers because when I type when I did three it didn't look great there was still some bulging coming through from the infill so what this actually does is slices normally for the rest of it except for the top layers so once you get finished with the planar slicing it starts adding on these non-planar top layers So if you're curious, here is exactly the same part sliced with exactly the same settings, except this one is non-planar. This one I unchecked the box for non-planar. And you can see with a shallow curve like this, it's pretty dramatic. I like this silver or aluminum filament because it shows edges really nice. But you can definitely feel all of the uh, layers where on this one it's smooth. Now granted there is a little bit of like a checker type surface finish to it. And I think with some tweaking you could really improve it. But it's a whole heck of a lot better than this. So with that, there are some more notes in my description. Go ahead and take a look at those. Send me some comments. Let me know if this was helpful. If you want me to do some other things or explore some other things, this took me a long time to figure out. Uh, I hope it really helps save you some time. I probably have eight hours into just figuring this out and getting it to actually work. So please, thanks for watching and let me know what you think. Give me some more suggestions, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll talk to you later. Hey, I just also wanted to let you know that uh, Teaching Tech does a really good job of showing a similar process to what I did, but he used a virtual machine for Linux instead of a dual boot situation. Uh, so if you're interested in something like that, go check him out too. There's some great content over there.